Hello and welcome to the 15th round of the 2016 PCC Lights season here at the Iowa Speedway. Qualifying on the pole is Dustin Oliver with Sam Burkhart on his outside. In row number two, you've got JC Carpenter who just came off a sixth place finish in the PCC Trucks race and Lenore Scurry. Speaking of the PCC Trucks race, which just finished about an hour ago, uh, Will Crawford won the pole for that and took off and uh, didn't look back as we had a bit of a scuffle between uh, Mason Yokoyama and a few other drivers as Yokoyama got spun there by Ryan Griffin. He would keep the truck going without problems, but Luke Pellerin runs into him after the caution flies for no reason, and uh, Yokoyama didn't take too kindly to that and spun out Pellerin right after that, uh, drawing another caution. We would go to an overtime dash at the end after a collision between a few drivers, uh, Benson, Fitzwater, Washer, and uh, Jack Hansen would bring out the caution. Uh, Vinny LaBeouf and Sergei Yakovsky would stay out to try and win on the one lap dash, but Will Crawford makes a move on the final turn on the final lap and would take the win as they go four wide in the back for second place with Ryan Jeffries taking that position. As we get to the back of the field now, you've got uh, Carter Fitzgerald, Alex Constantine, those two have struggled all day, and uh, unsurprisingly rounding out the field are Matt and Trek Tauger in the Tauger Racing Unit cars. And with that, Dustin Oliver in the 31 car leads the field to the green flag over Sam Burkhart and J.C. Carpenter. This is Dustin Oliver's seventh pole of his light series career, and he has exactly zero wins to show for all of his poles and his good runs. So he's really looking for a strong run here today and uh, hoping to get that first win at, at Iowa. Uh, the Nevada native leading uh, through three and four. He's pulled a pretty decent gap on Carpenter, as the field starts to go too wide all through the field, this looks like it's going to be another super speedway race at the .75 mile oval. As uh, Alex Constantine and Trek Tauger have already lost the pack uh, on lap number four. Uh, this is a timed race, so we don't have lap constraints. But uh, for these two drivers, they're hoping that it goes as, le as few as laps as possible, so uh, they don't end up going a lap down. Going back up front, on lap 16, Dustin Oliver has led every single one of them, so he appears to have a very strong car here today. Bluto Belushi there in second place having a good run. Lenore Scurry is going to make a pass on him, though, with help from Zach Meyer back there as Lenore Scurry goes to second place. And we're already, got, uh, already looking at some lap traffic just a few seconds up ahead of these leaders. And uh, just a lap later... They catch Constantine and Trek Tiger going too wide, and that means that Dustin Oliver is going to lose the lead for the first time all race. On lap uh, lap 18, as looks like Zach Meyer has taken the lead with help from J.C. Carpenter and Kelly Thomas up there. As uh, now it looks like Constantine and Tiger have sorted up to the high line, and they're staying mostly out of people's ways. Uh, by lap 25, uh, the third lane, the middle lane, has formed. And uh, this is looking like a classic super speedway race at Daytona or Talladega. And uh, we're focused on Chris Benson right now, who ran the PCC Trucks race. That was his truck's debut, and uh, he was involved in an accident late. Didn't quite get the finish he was hoping for. As, uh, now, at lap 30, we've got the entire field in one pack. So uh, <laughs> this it looks like a super speedway race from the Cup Series, but we're on a point... Uh, I believe this is a 7 8 mile oval, so a uh, bit out of place if you ask me. Uh, Jeff Fisher has taken the lead on lap 31, and uh, Fisher has revealed himself to be uh, quite, the, uh, quite the talented driver. Uh, the former Trans Am champion uh, has won a race or two this year already, and is actually looking to be the main championship rival for Sam Burkhart and Dustin Oliver as... Now we're looking here at Dustin Oliver, who has once again taken the lead. He got shuffled out by those lapped cars, but he managed to get around, and he holds a half-second lead over Ron Yave in uh, the 8 car, who's actually having a very a very good run. Uh, didn't expect this out of the 8 car, but it, since it's a super speedway race, anyone can shuffle their way to the front, but you have your inherently stronger cars, such as the 31 and 92, doing uh, what they can to stay up front. As we've got four wide back in the pack, Casey Lester, the circle track cars, and Lucy and Ekdahl, and they're going to get together, and Lester's going to get spun in front of the back of the field, and that's going to draw the caution on lap 38. Uh, no damage, no one ran into each other, and uh, everyone's going to get their cars pointed in the right direction and keep going. Uh, Lester has been running near the back of the field all day, 
so his day just got a little bit worse as Lenore Scurry managed to get around Dustin Oliver for the lead as the entire field's going to bring their cars down the pit road. Matt Beck did a stop, did a uh, gas and go and managed to take the lead, uh, did not change his tires, so 07 car is up near the front. He's had a pretty decent season. He's been up in the top 15 in points all season uh, and wins a lot motorsports has not really had the season they've been looking for they were expecting to win the championship with greg maddox who is not faring too well as dustin oliver takes the lead uh with help from justin king on the bottom and king is gonna shuffle oliver to the high side and the king of cleveland justin king as he's uh become known in the past few years uh won the cleveland grand prix twice in the late 2000s uh is back up front and it uh, looks like he's got a pretty strong car as he's managed to pull a gap on uh, Denny Adams and it looks like Chris Benson's made his way back up into the top, fifth, uh, top five. So Benson having a strong run here today as JC Carpenter is losing the draft along with Trek Tauger once again. Carpenter who had a sixth place finish in the trucks race, uh, not having the run he was hoping for today as he did run near the front but unfortunately just got uh, stuck behind some slow cars and we've got a second pack that's forming with Maddox uh, Lester, Constantine's there, Yave, Sanders, Fitzgerald, and Matt Tauger, uh, and they're, look, they're looking to lose the draft, and it wouldn't be long before Trek Tauger and Carpenter were caught uh, by the leaders, as looks like they're being pretty gracious this time, as they let Dustin Oliver have the bottom, uh, Carpenter's trying to get around Tauger, but he decides against it and decides to let the field uh, shuffle by on the inside line. They're sticking to the high side, which means that middle line might even be able to get through, but uh, Tauger pulls low for some reason. As uh, near the back of the field, uh, Dean Wormer and Daniel Bouchard have lost the field. Uh, so they're running in 23rd and 24th, so that that uh, main pack is down to 22 cars. And you can see just how this second pack has grown a little bit. Uh, they're about half a lap down right now, and it looks like they'll stay on the lead lap for the end of the race, but... Uh, they're out of contention for the win, as Chris Benson, who got shuffled to the back of the pack, has a tire go down on that 28 car, which is a tough break, because he was having such a great run. Chris Benson, who lost his ride uh, with Stefan's Racing in the Cup Series, has been shuffling around in the lower series, uh, picking up rides where he can. And Daniel Bouchard, who lost the pack, something more serious was uh, wrong with that car than we initially thought, and he pulls that car to the inside. Uh, sounds like a suspension piece broke on that uh, 972 car and he is going to be the first retirement of the race. Daniel Bouchard has had a pretty decent season but this is definitely going to be a black mark on that season as he's going to be the first retiree from the event. Under 10 minutes to go in this race already and Josiah Hofacker is having a fantastic run. He's up in second place right now. He's going to get shuffled out of line here by uh, Dima Van Hall but he's stayed in the lead pack all race. Just done a fantastic job for that struggling Grand Strand racing team. Uh, they're actually in the relegation battle right now, so uh, moments like this are huge for that team to uh, try and stay afloat in the light series. Uh, I've actually heard that if that team gets demoted, they may close down, as Lenore Scurry, who's been one of the main rivals for uh, Dustin Oliver all, all race, is going to make a move to the inside with help from Lucy Nectal Jr., and she's going to take the lead here with uh, about eight minutes to go in this race. Uh, Lenore Scurry going by there. Oliver's going to fall back, and uh, looking at this uh, second pack right now, they're two and three wide. They decide to start battling each other with about six minutes to go, and uh, you can see just how far ahead they are of that uh, first pack, which means that they will stay on the lead lap. Here's James Beverly running up in the top five after uh, tragically losing that race up in Canada. Uh, he broke down on the last lap as we've got some smoke there. A car hit the wall. Not seeing a caution though, but Beverly having a strong run here in Iowa, uh, trying to bandage those wounds from uh, that heartbreaking finish in Canada. As looks like Chris Benson made contact with Sanders and uh, Constantine, Trek Tauger goes into the wall too. No caution for this, for some reason. And uh, Benson and Tauger and Sanders are gonna be slow getting away and that means that they're gonna fall another lap down as Tauger graciously pulls down and dies for the pits as Damon Jones leads. He's going to take the outside line trying to get around the wounded car of Chris Benson. Uh, Matt Beck trying to take advantage, but he's not pulling to the inside of Benson for some reason. 
but Damon Jones is going to try and clear Benson on the outside. He's got Messina, and that's Josiah Hofacker behind him. Still up front. Great run for him. And Damon Jones, a couple laps later, is finally going to get around Sanders here. Uh, he's got drafting help on the outside, and Sanders is just off the pace enough that he's going to clear there. And uh, looks like Chris Benson's being swallowed by the pack. Uh, Gabe Messina is going to clear the 7 car as well. And uh, 93 car is going for the lead here with help from Hofacker. And uh, Sanders has not moved from that bottom line, but Gabriel Messina has taken the lead with uh, about three and a half minutes to go in this race. But Hofacker is going to take a look on the inside with drafting help from Sanders, who has not gotten out of the way. Uh, he is jamming up that bottom line, and that means that Hofacker is going to be able to hold off uh, that bottom line is definitely a lot faster than the high line as Greg Maddox is breaking down. He's going to pull into the pits and his day is done. So a tough break for the 0-8 team as they are really hoping to have a good, strong run here today as he continues to free fall through the points. But Hofacker is still hanging on. Uh, you can thank Austin Sanders for that. He is probably the only person, Hofacker is, who wants Sanders to be on that bottom line. And uh, you can see just the strong cars that are back there. He's just fast enough that they can't get underneath him. But he's slow enough pre to prevent any kind of run to happen on the bottom. As Hofacker is now free to block the high and middle line, which now is formed. Uh, you can see there Tiffany Matthews leading that middle line. And now he's got three lanes to block, Hofacker does. As Fergal Sheedy and uh, a couple of those guys have come from the back of the pack to run that middle line up to the front. So Sanders has kind of created this log jam, which has allowed the middle line to become the fastest line around the track. Hofacker is going to move up high, drifts up just a little bit too much. Fergal Sheedy sees a chance and he's going to take it going into turn three here. And Sheedy, with just about 30 seconds to go, is going to take the lead. Hofacker gets shuffled up to the high side and uh, Fergal Sheedy is going to take the lead with uh, help from Denny Adams. Sanders still has not moved from that bottom line and is preventing that run from gener being generated down there. And uh, looks like Denny Adams is going to clear. So it's going to be between Sheedy and Adams as we take the white flag. Uh, Sheedy from Ireland got picked up. This is uh, Barry Juvenos' car from the start of the season. Isn't bringing any sponsorship. It has a personal connection with Patrick O'Hannigan. And that means that coming through three and four... Fergal Sheedy staring at his first career win as uh, Denny Adams gets shuffled high there by Jeff Fisher. But Fergal Sheedy is going to take his first career win at the Iowa Speedway. Taking a look at the top 20 now. Jeff Fisher managed to get second place away from Denny Adams who finished third. Zach Meyer has a fantastic run once again. Finishes in fourth place. Isaac Parsons, top five for him. Great run for that 79 team. Lucy Nectal Jr. is sixth. Uh, good run for him as well. James Beverly, 7th place. Patrick O'Hannigan, team car to Fergal Sheedy, finishes in 8th. Roman Carpont has a great run in ninth place. Lenore Scurry falls down to 10th. That's still a good run for her in her championship battle. Tiffany Matthews is in 11th. That team really needs that finish. Same thing with Josiah Hofacker in 12th place. He faded late, but still a great run for that uh, 44 car. Dustin Oliver finishes in 13th, disappointing for him considering he had the best car all race. Kelly Thomas in 14th, JF Davila 15th, Damon Jones falls back to 16th after leading fairly late in the going. Same thing with Gabriel Messina in the 93. Dima Van Hall fell back to 18th place, Matt Beck in 19th, and Alex Posington rounds out the top 20. After a disappointing performance outside the top 20 for Sam Burkhart, his points lead drops to 37 over Jeff Fisher now who jumped over Dustin Oliver for second in points. Below them is the Rookie of the Year battle right now between Lenore Scurry and Lucian Ekdahl Jr., who sit 4th and 5th. Damon Jones and Denny Adams, the DJ Motorsports cars, are 6th and 8th, with JF Davila sitting on 3 wins and 7th place in points between them. Casey Lester falls down to 9th place in points after a very disappointing run from him today. I was expecting a lot more out of that 29 car. Patrick O'Hannigan jumps up to 10th in points after a strong run today. James Beverly and Isaac Parsons sit tied for 11th on 311 points. Beverly gets the tiebreaker based on laps completed. Roman Carpont and Dima Van Hall, the Tony Long Autosport cars, are 13th and 17th in points, having a great season. Pausington, 
teammate to JF Davila sits 14th in points. Matt Beck is the best, wins a lot motorsports car in 15th, as Greg Max has fallen outside the top 20 for the first time all season. Justin King sits 16th in the 22 car. Kelly Thomas is 18th. Uh, Daniel Bouchard, after finishing last, drops down to 19th in points. And after running only about half the season, Zach Meyer sits 20th in points on 260 points. And finally, looking at the team points, the top three remains the same, although Sam Brown Racing and Lambert Motorsports are likely to defer their promotions to the Cup Series at season's end due to their status as development teams for some Cup teams, which means that the three promotion teams currently are DJ Motorsports, Syzygy Engineering, and Petrol Tech Engineering, who is tied in points with Hannigan Enterprises, but takes that position going down to three tiebreakers. Team Canada sits seventh place, AJ Murphy Racing is down to eighth, losing quite a bit of ground to the top seven. Tony Long looks ready to pounce on the AJ Murphy team. Ectal Autosport moves up to 10th. Winslet Motorsports drops down to 11th. They're having a pretty disappointing year. Circle Track Racing moves up to 13th, passing Genesis Engineering. Fat Trunk Stupid Racing sits 14th. And Grand Strand Racing moves out of relegation after a pretty strong run from uh, the 44 car. They pass Turbo Sports, who drops down to 16th. Ryan Matthews Racing sits 17th. And Tauger Racing Unit finally cracks 400 points, but is still last in team standings.